This is uh, Federica from Talk City, and it's my pleasure to introduce you to this live presentation of Guangdong Tech Neon. And it's also my pleasure to introduce you to Ronnie Levinger. She's part of the marketing team at Guangdong Tech Neon. And uh, so we can now begin with our presentation. Ronnie, I'll leave you the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Federica. Uh, hi, good evening, everyone. I hope you can hear me. If not, you can chat and Federica would let me know. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, I am uh, actually located in Israel, so I would say good evening, but I know some of you uh, probably are just starting um, the day. What I'm going to do is I'm going to explain to you what Technion is and what Guangdong Technion is and elaborate about the Guangdong Technion uh, programs um, uh, for, for a, um, an engineering degree. And uh, after that, I'll take your questions. And if anyone wants to follow up, I'll give you my contact information for later. Uh, so Guangdong Technion, here we go. Guangdong Technion is located in Shantong. And uh, a story I heard when I first started working at Technion, because it was after uh, the campus was already established, is that uh, way back when, in 2012, 2013, Technion was going through a series of auditions. However, we didn't realize it was an audition. Every few uh, months, we would get a uh, delegation or two uh, from China coming in to visit different departments at Technion and um, um, having ex uh, doing different experiments or meetings. And uh, a few months later, in uh, 2013, uh, Li Kaxing, the richest person in uh, Europe, uh, his foundation donated $130 million dollars uh, for Technion to open GTIIT, Guangdong Technion Institution, Israel Institution of uh, Technology in Shanton, his hometown. Um, Technion was chosen from probably a few dozens or even probably over a hundred establishments. Some of them are even uh, Ivy League uh, universities in the US. And um, the Guangdong and Shanton government also um, uh, donated um, quite a bit of money, as you can see here in the presentation, uh, for the establishment of such a, uh, a university. Uh, I want to show you why Technion uh, was chosen in a short movie that gives you a little bit uh, of information of Technion. Enjoy. Before we begin. Hi, Ronnie. At the moment, we can't see the video. We can still see the slide. The trial and error. The One second. And the greatness. Sure. Through ups and downs, there is a vision. A vision that. This. Thanks. Perfect. Thank you. Before we begin. Behind the ideas and hurdles, the trial and error, the striving and the greatness, through ups and downs, there is a vision, a vision that never changes, the vision to do good. This is Technion. Where does vision come from? From people like you, enlightened minds who fill the future with care, guardians of all we share. Doing good by protecting this precious planet, harnessing energy resources to empower tomorrow and learning from the scientific genius of nature. Doing good by advancing world health through revolutionary scientific insight medical treatments, and life-saving technology. Doing good by opening all channels of data, 
predicting future needs, anticipating the next wave of innovation, and keeping it all safe. Doing good by transferring the power of discovery from laboratory to marketplace and sharing the culture of creativity across the world. Doing good with the vision to create something from nothing. Releasing the power of inspiration so that everything becomes possible. Doing good with Technion, where great minds come together to create a brighter future for all. Technion, from visionary education to a world of impact. Great, thank you so much for sharing this video. Perfect. Absolutely. Uh, so we'll continue and uh, talk a little bit about Technion. Technion is the leading institute of technology in Israel. It is considered the best university in Israel and it's also ranked uh, number 80 in the Shanghai ranking for 2021 that came out, I think, today. Uh, so really, it's a great school, a great opportunity. Some people compare it to the American MIT. Uh, you study, uh, you come to Technion to study engineering, nothing else? Well, architecture, but, but, but really technological um, um, degrees, mostly engineering. Technion is a world leader in science, engineering, and technology. Technion Israel Institute of Technology is the heart of the startup nation, also known as Israel, producing significant portion of Israel's entrepreneurial leaders, scientific discoveries, and technological advancement. I didn't include some of the slides, the, the Technion slide in this presentation, but I can tell you that 25% of Technion graduates file a, a patent request. 67% um, uh, of Technion graduates open or run their own company. So it's a really, it's, it's, it is the best uh, university in Israel. And uh, Technion has three campuses around the world uh, in Cornell, mostly for master degrees, Cornell in uh, New York, US, uh, Technion Israel, um, where it all started, where it all began, and Guangdong uh, Technion in uh, GTIIT, the campus we are discussing now, to share with you the programs it has to offer. Um, Technion is one of the top eight universities for, to produce Nobel Prize winners. Four of the 12 Nobel Prizes Israel uh, had won, or Israeli scientists have won, are uh, Technion uh, faculty. Um, uh, you can, you, you're more than welcome to write up their names and look them up because they are amazing. And it's the kind of place where you walk around and you might write, run into a Nobel Prize winner, uh, which is uh, pretty great. Let me show you a little bit of uh, a few people that graduated from Technion. Dov Moran, you can see here, he's the founder of SanDisk and the inventor of um, uh, the USB flash drive. Uh, Amit Gopher, um, the, the president and CTO of Ro uh, Robotic, uh, uh, actually helped people walk again, get up from their wheelchair and be able to walk and climb up and down stairs and many more. Um, great minds that came out of Technion. Uh, and so I told you how everything began. And in 2013, we started the cooperation that's called GTIIT, Guangdong Technion Israel Institute of Technology. Uh, you can see how beautiful the campus is. Uh, and let me share with you now uh, a little bit of background, fast fact about GTIIT, and we will continue to discuss. Just a second.
So going back uh, to, <clears throat> to our presentation after watching this uh, movie and seeing this incredible brand new state of the art uh, um, campus, I just want to point out a few simple advantages as to why choose Technion, why choose GTIIT, other than the fact that academic level wise, it's probably the best option or one of the best options in the world to study engineering. Um, um, I want to say our program prides itself, itself in being a small program or at least in teaching in small groups. Uh, students have personal relations and personal attention from the professors. I can give you an example. One day a professor came into our office in Israel, but it's um, a similar program, came into our office and said, What's wrong with student X? He lost a lot of weight. He doesn't see himself. And it really gives you, the, it gives you an idea of, of how close the professors are with the students, how much attention they, they give them, uh, how well they know them, and they can feel if there is a change, if, something's, if everything's OK or something's wrong. The same with academic studies. They are uh, accessible. They are there for you. They will answer your questions. Um, usually the lectures are done in groups of 10, 20, 40 people. You are not a face in a group of 400 people in an auditorium. Uh, you are a person with a name, with a personality, and with a talent that is noticeable. So a very small program taught in small groups, that's a great advantage. That's Technion International, the international programs that uh, Technion and, and uh, GT, Technion Guangdong, uh, offer all about that. The second advantage is uh, international, international staff. The professors are Technion professors, mostly Israeli, some from the rest of the countries in the world, some from Europe. We have um, uh, professors from um, um, Germany, Italy, France, the US, and many professors from Israel. They go there for a year, for two years, they uh, relocate, and they uh, manage these programs and teach the, the, the students. Uh, and that's a great advantage because Technion um, was established in 1912. It has so much experience and such good staff that was raised there from the, when they were um, young students it's a great uh, advantage. Also, it leads me to the third advantage, which is great, great international networking. So you study with international professors, uh, um, excellent world recognized international professors in small groups, you end up with a wonderful network uh, to begin with your career with. Um, so those are really the main reasons to consider GTIIT. Uh, GTIIT uh, is located in Shantou uh, uh, in China and the academic level and the excellence is driven by Technion Israel which is really like I said a leading institute uh, to study engineering. Uh, we have four different programs completely in English. Uh, everything is taught in English uh, at GTIIT. And the programs are chemical engineering, and I will elaborate in a minute, biotechnology and food engineering, material engineering, and mathematics with computer science. <clears throat> Let's talk about chemical engineering. Um, Chemical engineers are involved in most branches of the industry. Uh, they are needed for almost all industries, which is great. Uh, they deal with um, energy, so power plants and um, uh, solar systems. They deal with uh, water technology, uh, microelectronics, uh, biotechnology, which we also have uh, separately. Uh, they deal with security, environmental uh, quality, and environmental engineering, and much more. Uh, they are usually, uh, they take part in many processes 
within the company. So career-wise, there is a variety of opportunities worldwide. So um, you're not limited to the car industry or to the defense industry or, or, or anything uh, uh, very specific, and your career can be very diverse with this kind of a degree, which is, uh, could be great for some people, so it's an advantage. Uh, a, a BSc in Biotechnology and Food Engineering. Uh, this program is one of the only programs in the world that really merge between um, uh, engineering and life science. So biotechnology and food engineering is uh, bring together two fields that make that specific engineer an asset to any company. And because it's a unique uh, combination and it's needed in many of the uh, material, uh, um, material um, companies and also food engineering uh, companies. So it's, it's, it's a great degree. It's very successful. We just last year had the, la the first um, uh, class graduate. It was really, really great. And they're starting to find jobs around the world. You can follow us on our Technion International Instagram. It's Technion underscore international. And uh, every now and then we post a picture of a fresh uh, uh, graduate near his uh, new uh, place of employment uh, with a very happy face. Uh, next is a degree in material engineering. Um, the, this is a very, very interesting degree. It's very popular also in I Israel. And that's the reason why we opened this program uh, in China. Uh, the materials engineer is involved in all processes of any manufacturing company um, from, um, from computer components to, um, to the car industry to any really any industry and they are involved in the r d um, uh, research and development uh, to decide which materials they should use they do the research they help with the development and then they are a part of the implementation processes uh, for those uh, materials um, it's a very well seeked profession and also very interesting uh, and the last degree that we're going to talk about, and it's actually very, very new, the first class in GTIIT uh, just started last August, but uh, it, it, it's, uh, the, that department is 25 years old in Technion Israel, so no worries as far as uh, us knowing what we're doing and what we're teaching you. Uh, BSc in Mathematics with Computer Science. So the goal of this uh, program is to provide the student with a broad, deep uh, education in mathematics. It's a math mathematics degree. But uh, other than the highest level of math they teach, they also give you 30 to 40 points in computer science, uh, in a computer science degree also the highest level. So there are a few levels and depending on which um, engineering degree you take, you will study different levels of uh, computer science classes and mathematics classes. But because this uh, program is mathematics with computer science, any class you take will be the highest level of math and the highest level of computer science. And um, the extent of the computer science component is such that it will allow um, a student who's interested in, in pursuing a master's degree in, in uh, computer science to be able to do that, to get accepted uh, because of the, the portion of the program that it takes. It's about 30%. Um, uh, what the degree does, it, it, it helps the, the, the uh, st student um, be able to work in companies that don't only do programming, but the programming is um, based on the development of algorithm, algorithms that um, need 
to make calculations as whatever as the code is implemented. So let's take um, uh, radars. Okay, so if you need to uh, have an algorithm that says uh, whenever we see something on our radar, we need to react in such a manner. Um, alert, send something to see what it is. Uh, then a lot of, of the way the code works relies on, on mathematics. education will be very valuable to many, many companies, not only in the defense industry, but definitely, yes, in the defense industry, it's really thriving throughout the world, um, unfortunately. Um, so it's, it's uh, so the last item here says that it can also contribute to the entrance of the career related to, of any career related to computer science. And it's, it's true, we've seen some of our graduates really, really excel in their career in high-tech companies. The entry requirements would be, first of all, you have to be math and science oriented. You have to take math and science in, and, and physics in high school, and you have to get an above 80% average in both of those uh, subjects and also in general. So if you have a lower score in something else, that's fine, but you cannot have less than 80% in math and in physics and also the general average. You have to take an English proficiency test and you have to, usually we request an SAT and the score needs to be over 700. However, if you come from a country where you don't take the SATs, then we will work with you and see what kind of tests you take in your country. And so the equivalent of 700 in the SAT that uh, uh, is a custom in your country is what we require you to, to do. So South Africans, for example, they don't have an SAT or any kind of an exam. They will need an above 80% uh, uh, average and also above 80 in math and physics in order to get in. In addition, you have to write an essay, submit your CV, pass a personal interview. So there are a few stages and a few documents you have to submit, but mainly high school students need to consider uh, this slide when they are in high school, if they're thinking about coming to Technion because you don't wanna be at a point where you didn't take physics your senior year, and that's uh, what's holding, holding you back when you apply to Technion. So math and physics, most important. Um, the tuition is 15,000 uh, uh, US dollars per academic year. And on average, if you choose to live on campus, the housing costs will be uh, $5,000 a year. Um, uh, of course, Depending on where you go, you will have to um, uh, get medical insurance and other expenses that you probably have anywhere in the world that you want to study in. Uh, in addition to these four programs, uh, you, there's another English program that's offered in Israel by Technion International, and that's mechanical engineering. And um, if you have any questions about that or you, wanna, uh, you want information about that, let me show you. I'm going to share my screen again, this time on my Chrome. This is the Technion International website, so you have to uh, just go on that and then under programs, I hope you can see what I'm doing. Undergraduate, yes. great, <laughs> thank you. Uh, undergraduate, and then you can see mechanical engineering and civil engineering. Those are the programs we have. If you click on mechanical engineering, here is all the information you need about the program. This is uh, right here on the, in the picture with a green kind of background. That's the snake robot, was invented by a Technion um, uh, professor, Alon Wolf, and that's called the snake robot. It was invented after 9-11, and it is a mechanical, uh, a mechanical snake a robot 
that goes in uh, underground in earthquake crackage and it can find survivors and then send a, sing a, single, a, a signal saying where they are and it saved many, many people. Um, Alon Wolf is, he runs a lab at Technion. He's so accessible to students. He's a wonderful person to talk to. And that's just a small example of how down to earth and accessible our professors are, no matter how much of a genius they are and what incredible inventions they have um, created and, 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 um, and so that's about mechanical engineering. And then you have these tabs up here that can give you a little bit more information, but throughout the website, I'm gonna scroll down here, you have a contact us form um, and anything you write there will get directly to me and I'll be able to answer any question you have about TI, Technion International, the Mechanical Engineer Program, but also about uh, GTIIT, uh, Guangdong Technion, and the four programs we are talking about today. Um, moving on, going to the GTIIT uh, website, right under Academics. Academics. Undergraduate studies. And here you can see all our programs. Uh, I have all of them open in case you'll have any questions later, but this is what it looks like. Uh, now, this website uh, that's different than the Technion International website I just showed you is the GTIIT website. It's a great, great place for you to get information. It has all the information you need, but it is, its main job is to give you information and the Chinese students information. Chinese students, when they submit their application, they have uh, uh, other processes they have to go through. If you would like to submit your application, then, you would go to undergraduate studies. Admissions, undergraduate studies and then uh, international students. And at the bottom here, it will give you my email address and the apply now button. This apply now button is the same as this one in the Technion International website I showed you. So you have two ways in which you can apply. You either go on Technion International or, or you go on gtiit.com. Both sites will give you all the information you need. Both sites will give you my contact details. And both sites will give you an apply now button uh, that you can use to apply to our program. If I click on that right now, then you can see that the first thing I have to do is choose a program, uh, undergraduate programs right here. And then I have a drop. BSc in Mechanical Engineering, Material Engineering, Guangdong Campus, Biotechnology and Food Engineering, Guangdong Campus, Chemical Engineering, Guangdong Campus, and Mathematics with Computer Science, Guangdong Campus. So these are the uh, four-year programs we are offering students right now, fully in English, as I said, small programs with personal attention, great networking, international faculty staff, um, really great. Uh, if you do not choose Technion for your education, please note there is also an option um, if you are a student in another establishment to come to Technion uh, as an exchange student for one or two semesters. And also we run great summer programs uh, with uh, internships and credits. So that is also something that could work. 
um, I forgot to mention that students who come from um, uh, students who go to GTIIT also are able to do a semester or a year in Technion International, uh, Technion International in, in Israel. Uh, as a part of their program, of course, with uh, all the classes they need to take and get all the credits they need to get because it's the same um, establishment, essentially, and the degree is, anyway, is a Technion degree. Um, so that's it. I am done with my presentation and will be very, very happy to take any questions that you might have. Thank you so much, Froggy. And we actually did receive some questions while you were presenting. So one of the first questions we receive is about uh, the background. So they're asking us in Brazil, they are normal high school, but also technical high school. Um, what sort of background do you accept? So do you accept people that are coming from a technical background, but also non-technical background for those bachelor programs? Uh, well, what, what we do is we do, uh, you don't have to come from a technological high school. You don't have to, but you do have to be uh, math and physics oriented, math and science oriented. So when you're in high school, you have to take math and get, well, I, I guess almost everyone has to take math, but get above 80%. And you also have to take physics, which not everybody takes in high school. You need to take physics in high school and get an above 80% average in those two and also in general. What we do is in Israel and also GT because it's an Israeli uh, institute, uh, we start the school year usually in October after the Jewish holidays of the beginning of the year. Uh, the first year for these programs doesn't start in October, it starts in August in a, in, in a longer semester that, that we call Mechina, it's a preparatory period, in which we take really students from all over the world who studied math in different methods and different levels and different uh, languages, and we bring them all to the same level. That's the, the, the uh, goal of this uh, initial period, the beginning of the first semester of the first year is to take everyone and to make sure they are at the same level before we begin. So you do need to be science oriented. You need to take physics and math. You do not need to come specifically from a technological high school. Perfect. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Then we have another question is about one of the programs about food engineering. Mm -hmm. It's asking about if, we, if you can tell us more and in terms of like job perspective, what sort of job are related to this program? Well, the job, I, I can tell you more. Yes, one second. Let's go on. So moving on to um, biotechnology and food, food engineering. I, I just want to say that the person who asked this question, please feel free to contact me via email and I can put you in touch with a student who is either studying now or graduated. And then they can answer questions because you can imagine that working in the marketing team, I haven't attended most of the classes. And I, so, uh, I find that a lot of times potential students, high school students and their parents might also have questions that I can't answer, but our students or our graduates will be happy to answer. So I just want to start by saying, please, if you are interested, if you want to hear more, if you have specific questions about classes, about the atmosphere, about the size, about uh, the careers you can pursue um, and the elective classes you can take, uh, feel free to contact me. Uh, I showed you where you can find my uh, email and my information, and I can put you in touch with a, a, a student or a graduate, an alumni that can answer all your questions. Uh, so really it's a degree that combines two different fields, 
and most students will find themselves working in the food industry, um, uh, medicine, uh, medicine industries, um, pretty much globally. So it's very, very international. You have a lot of high tech companies in these fields in Israel uh, that uh, the startups and then they get purchased by bigger companies. Uh, so those are usually the type of, uh, of careers people choose to pursue, going into small startups, coming up with really great ideas and then being bought by a huge food company that's going to use their patents. Perfect. Thank you so much. That's great. There is also another question about the uh, admission process. So they ask, uh, do I have to pass an interview to get admit, admitted and what should I prepare? Okay, so in order to get admitted, I showed you where you can click on apply now, choose the program and start the process. The first uh, step would be in entering your personal information and then you're waiting for a confirmation email that sometimes will go to your junk folder, so just check. But if there's any problem, you can just uh, contact me or uh, uh, anyone from my team. Uh, once you have your account set up, you have to, to complete the rest of your information. You have to have a valid passport. You have to write a short essay, about half a page to a page, about why you're interested in that program, why you're interested in leaving home for your, uh, uh, to pursue your education. Uh, you have to write your CV. There is a format there, but you, have to, you, you can use your own format or whatever you think might work. Uh, uh, best. And then after you submit all that information, your request is open. You will be contacted to uh, set up a, a personal interview. The interview usually is there to take a look at your personality and make sure you're able to, to do it. It's a, uh, I mean, I smile when I talk and I say Technion is the best and you should come to Technion, but really it's not easy. It's not going to be easy. It's, uh, it's very challenging. Um, sometimes it can be stressful. You are earning the best education you could. You're going to be great engineers, but you really have to work hard for it. And doing it away from home, away from your family, in a foreign language sometimes, because not everybody comes from an English speaking country in a foreign language, uh, in, a, in a different culture, uh, with people you never met, and home is far away, even though I have seen the students and how they make friends and, you know, family even. So the interview is for that, to check your personality, to make sure you'll be able to handle it, to make sure you understand what, what it means to come to GT or to Technion, because uh, it's a lot. And uh, you probably have to be yourself. They're not going to ask you any math or physics questions. Uh, they'll ask you about you. You should be able to handle it. Great. Thank you so much for all these advices, Ronnie. Uh, Julie is asking us a question about the exchange programs that you mentioned earlier. So how many months does this program last? Well, Julie, uh, I don't know which country you came from. Or Federica, do you know? The country? No, but maybe Julie can answer. It's Julie Pereira, so maybe she can answer where she's connecting from. In the meantime, maybe we can give a general information. Well, the semester in Israel or, and also in GT starts the first semester of the year, starts in October, and it lasts until February when the exams are over. And then the second semester, the spring semester, starts in March, and that lasts until July. It is the way, it, it, that's the way it is because of the Jewish holidays and that's when we start the year. It makes a lot of sense because if you start in September and then you have three holidays and everything is closed for at least 15 days out of uh, the month, then it, it's, uh, it's really difficult for students to get the hang of it after the holidays. Um, so it does make sense, but Sometimes it doesn't go so well with, with the semester in countries like, let's say, the US. 
if you study in the US and you want to come to a winter semester in Israel, then it's a problem because by the time you're done in Israel, the semester in the US already started. That's why I asked about the country. Uh, what I do recommend to students who want to come for an exchange program is if the dates don't work, you can come for a year. If you come for a full year, then it doesn't matter when the semester, the, when the winter semester ends and the spring semester starts. You come, uh, let's say, in September, you get set, settled, uh, you uh, live in the dorms, you make some friends, you start uh, classes in October, and you're done by July. So even if university back home be, uh, uh, starts at the uh, late August, you, you're going to make it. So that's a great solution. Just come for two straight semesters, one full academic year. Some countries, I think India uh, and other countries, it works with the dates the way they are. Also, you can come for a spring semester, so you can finish your winter semester in January, let's say if you're in the US or in Canada, you can finish your uh, semester in January, hang out until March, and then start in Israel and, and finish uh, in July. So it's just a matter of making sure the dates work before you make a decision and then you find out you might not be able to do it. Perfect, thank you so much. Um, I can see that we received a few questions about the, if, is, if the university is actually offering some sort of scholarship, and if so, uh, if there is some sort of criteria that they need to look for and how to apply for those scholarships. Well, uh, we have, I have two items to discuss. Uh, one is we have an early bird promotion, we can call it. And anyone who submits an, a request, actually submits the request with all the information before January 1st, 2021, gets $3,000 off the first year's tuition. That's a significant discount. Um, it, usually it's uh, applicable every year, but we do have to get, it, to, to get an approval for it every year. This year it is happening. So anyone who wants to apply for uh, winter 2021, um, if they want to get the $3,000 the $3, uh, discount for the first year, uh, they should apply, submit the request by January 1st. Uh, we also have a merit-based scholarship, uh, but it's hard for me to say who uh, gets it and how much they get, because there is a pie, and then there is a criteria, and then throughout the year, that pie is divided between the students who met the criteria. So it's a merit-based uh, scholarship, and um, the better you are, the more chances you have. Other than that, I do know many, many students that have uh, funding and scholarships from uh, other programs that are not Technion. For example, if you're Jewish and you're coming to Israel, then um, uh, the immigration office uh, had some uh, benefits for you. Uh, a lot of other organizations, let's say in India, that want uh, people to go abroad and uh, come back engineers, um, offer scholarships. A lot of Jewish organizations send uh, students uh, to Israel um, and fund their first year or, or first semester. So it's really a matter of you going online and looking for scholarships, depending on where you're from, uh, looking for scholarships that will match what you're doing and the program you're looking to, you're seeking. And um, most students um, find at least some financial assistance. Perfect, thank you so much. We now have a question which I think is very interesting. So they ask us, um, how I can convince my parents to study internationally? So what are the benefits? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. It's about how can I convince my parents to study internationally? So the benefit of studying internationally, what they will be. Okay. First of all, I'm a parent, so you probably can't. Well, my kids can't anyways. Uh, but I'm, I'm just kidding. I, um, I think it really depends on whether or not you're sure of what you're doing. If you 
want to be an engineer, you probably already know it. And your parents probably already know it. And then it's a matter of you saying, hey, I don't just want to be an engineer. I want to be a technical engineer. Come look at the school. Come look at what they offer. Come look at how great the school is. Come look at the high level of excellence. Come look at the graduates and how well their careers are going. Come look at the Nobel Prize winners that this school has just lying around there, you know. Um, it's, it's a matter of really showing them that you did the research and you did the work and this is what you want, not just because you want to go and party in Israel, but because this is really the best or, or in China, in GT, but it, because it's really, it's a great step. Yeah, it's going to be great, a great experience. Yes, I'm going to make awesome friends for life, friends that are like family because I left home to do this. Yes, you're going to have all these personal benefits, but really I think your parents want to know that A, you're making this decision because it's the right decision, and B, you're going to be happy and content where you're at. Uh, I visited uh, a few schools in Canada last December before COVID, and I met up with some parents whose daughter already submitted her request, but they weren't sure. I met with them at the hotel lobby, we had coffee, and I answered all their questions, parent to parent. And she's coming, she's coming next winter. So I think it's, uh, it's really a matter of talking. And if you need my help, have your parents call me uh, or email, or if you are visiting Israel before it's time for you to, uh, to start, uh, college, then definitely they can uh, uh, visit, see the campus in Israel, see pictures and um, uh, information about the campus in uh, China. If you're around China, you can visit that campus. I can help arrange that. And really using Zoom, I can talk to any parents and answer any questions. And uh, most students really have their blessing. Perfect. Thank you so much, Rani. Another question is about internships. So asking if internships are part of the program and how does that work? Well, the internship really depends on the program. Some, it is a part of the program, but the school uh, set everything up. Uh, when I said internship before, I referred to a summer program we have. If someone decides not to come to Technion, and they go to any other technological university and they want to do an extra program, then we have a great entrepreneurship and internship program in the summer. So you come to Israel for eight to 10 weeks of an internship that we set up for you. We, we will set up the interviews for you. We will find you the internship. You come, you start the internship and right when it's over, you go, uh, you stay on campus for three to four weeks of classes. So it's an intense semester, you get credits for it and it's a great experience and it's really something great to put on your resume. Perfect, I think that this also answers to another question that came is about, are there any summer programs for teenagers? So yes, we, are, we, we mentioned this, I don't know if you want to. The summer program is not for teenagers. It's not for high school students. It is for um, uh, college students. Uh, this year, because of COVID, we had to cancel the two summer pro the two uh, high school programs that we have. But uh, we do have, uh, and probably pick it up next year, a, a summer program for uh, for teenagers for high school students. So if we have here in the crowd. Uh, high school students that aren't seniors and will be um, 11th or 12th grade next year, then there is a teen tech program that's uh, uh, it's, uh, 10 days in Israel. 50% uh, of the students in the, programs, in the program are Israelis and 50% of the students are international from a variety of countries. They tour the country, they visit, at the, uh, they visit, visit the president Israel president uh, hosted them last time. Uh, they uh, take some lectures and they have a three-day hackathon at the end. So it's a great program. I'm, I'm afraid we, it didn't go through last summer, but hopefully uh, we'll be able to do it uh, this summer and definitely the next one. And also we have uh, a few competitions. 
We have the Rube Goldberg competition for high school um, uh, students uh, where you have to build a Rube Goldberg machine uh, in your high school and you have to submit a video of it working and uh, the winner gets a full year scholarship. You work in teams. So even if you're a team of five, you, if, if you get accepted, you have a one year paid uh, if you win the competition. And uh, we also have a um, riddle competition. It's, uh, it's a good opportunity for me to tell you about it. It's, uh, we are going to do a virtual escape room. And for that, we need smart, smart high school students to write some riddles for us. And the riddles have to have some math and physics elements. And uh, the, the three win, winners, uh, three winning riddles will win an Amazon gift card that's individual. You can work in teams, but you will share the prize. You can find that on uh, Technion International website. And there's also a robot traffic uh, competition. This year it's virtual, but usually the leading teams come to Israel for the, to participate in the competition. You can also find information about that on our website. It's, it's, really, it's really a great uh, program, Robot Traffic. Thank you. The escape room sounds very interesting. The Amazon gift card is even more interesting, huh? <laughs> That's true. Um, another question is actually, what happens if I don't graduate on time? So let's say I'm a high school student and I meet the deadline for application because maybe I haven't graduated on time. Can I still apply on condition maybe? Uh, we have some students who apply on condition, but when the Mechina, the preparatory period begins in August, by then you have to have all your papers submitted. So you can get accepted under a condition, but you have to clear everything up by August and be available in August, or you can wait for the following year. You cannot start because we have that first semester and because the program is so small, it's, um, it's very structured. So uh, you can't start in the middle of the year. We, we don't have students in these international programs starting uh, spring semesters. You can only start in August. Um, so you can either defer by a year or you can uh, be accepted by, uh, on a condition and um, uh, complete all the paperwork before August. Thank you. There is another question from Daniela. So she's asking if among the courses, there will also be some sort of financial program. So if finance is one of the courses that they can actually learn within, of course, the um, engineering programs. Technion puts a lot of emphasis on entrepreneurship. And I also mentioned that a lot, 67% of Technion graduates open their own company. Um, so there are entrepreneurship classes and some emphasize finance. Uh, what I suggest is um, go online, go on our website, take a look at the classes we offer, take a look at the electives, write to me if you have any questions. I can talk to um, the relevant person in each of the faculties, what faculty you're interested in, talk to them and figure out um, for you if they have what you're looking for. Perfect, thank you so much. So we actually answered the majority of the, the questions. There was actually a comment someone that says it's very, very interesting. And Antonio, while the video was playing, was asking if that was a campus, the one that you showed us earlier. Yes, 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 the campus in the movie. It's. It's brand new, it's state of the art. Uh, the, art the, the, the labs are new and amazing, as well as the dorms, tennis courts and swimming pools. It's heaven. That's great. So a lot of things we said uh, this evening and we gave a lot of information. Just before closing, I just wanted to ask you, Ron, if there was anything else that you wanted to add to the people that are listening to us, any sort of advice that you want to give them. Of course, all the people that participated will receive then an email with some extra information and all the details to reach out to you. But anything that you feel you want to leave us, like on a note one. Well, I just want to say thank you so much for joining me uh, this evening. Um, 
this was just a little bit of what I can say about our programs. Uh, hoping I am leaving you wanting more and hoping whoever is interested in asking more questions, getting more information, will um, open up a conversation with me. You can contact me via uh, WhatsApp, email. Uh, once we email each other, we can schedule Zoom or a phone call. Uh, so just bear in mind that I am available and I will be happy to talk to you or your parents and give you um, all the information you need. This was obviously just a little bit to, to let you know what we're talking about and then we can elaborate uh, more specifically. Uh, actually, there is a last minute question is regarding Please. in my high school, there wasn't a physics class. Is that a big problem? It's a big problem. It's a huge problem. Uh, it is necessary. And if you haven't graduated yet, if you're still in high school, or if you have graduated, but you're not registering to any university soon or, or uh, next year, then you have time. You go to an external place that teaches math and you study and you take SATs in math, in, uh, so in physics, and and you get it done if you want to be an engineer it's yeah it's critical sorry i i don't want to lead anyone on it's critical that you study math and physics perfect but as you said there is still time to get some sort of preparatory courses and to be to be ready then so, yes absolutely perfect thank you so much thank you so much for your time and in case you do have any sort of more question, as we said, we're going to share with you Ronnie's email address. So please feel free to email her and ask all the questions. So thank you so much, for Ronnie, for being with us tonight. And all the thank you, Frederica. Stayed connected, and I wish you a very good evening or the rest of the day, based on where you're located. And we hope to see you soon at the next one long Technion webinar. Thank you so much. Thank you. And good night. Good night. Bye.